Hello and welcome to this Construct 3 tutorial on creating a scrollable list. So here you can see the end result where I have two buttons on my layout and whenever I press uh, list 1 you can see that um, there is a number of options here and I can just drag up and drag down to have this scrollable list. So I don't have a mouse connected now, it's with using a, a mouse pad, but if I would have a mouse I would use the scroll wheel to go up and down it would work as well and uh, each of these options has got a buy button if you click that one it says option 2 was bought or option 4 was bought so we can close this up again and I can open list 2 for example which is got only three options and this one doesn't scroll so and same price here buy item 3 bought so you can see that you can call this um, little dialog box with a number of options um, and uh, it will appear as so. So how does it work? Well, uh, so the dialog itself is spread over three different layers. So the background layer, this one here, um, holds the background of the dialog and the list scroll, the pink sprite here that can be dragged in a vertical direction by the drag and drop behavior. So if you click it, and do, click it here, you can see here it has the drag drop behavior but only vertically. Um, so this list scroller thing is where all of the content of the list will be uh, pinned to. Uh, and it's hidden at runtime, you can't see that uh, pink square. So all items are placed in the content layer which is above the background but under the foreground um, so slide all content under the foreground layer when scrolling uh, so all items are nest nicely held inside the border of the foreground layer in order to calculate that there are two image points in the border sprite to indicate the exact measurements of the border so if we go here and double click here we'll go to the image and we can see two image sprites, one right there and one right there. So these two image points are used to calculate whenever uh, something goes uh, above or beyond uh, the hole in the uh, border here. So the blue lines here are limiters. If the content goes above the top limiter or below the bottom limiter, uh, the content is hidden so it doesn't become visible when scrolling beyond the border here, there or below here. Uh, so the dialog can be dynamically populated with two uh, with content from JSON files. So let me see here, there are two JSON files here, lost, lost list options and list options too. Uh, so the demonstration shows two buttons for two different lists and one of the lists can have less options has less options than the first list so the one the first one doesn't uh, does scroll and the second one does not scroll so that's uh, how it works so let's see uh, what that does so there this is the main layout and of course on the object types here you can see that we have a main label a list label a sub label a button and in uh, attached to the button there is the button text it is in the same container so that means whenever we create a button the button text is also created um, and when we destroy a button the button text is also destroyed which is very handy and there's also a list divider here so th these are the three things that's on the list but of course if you create your own list scroll you can attach whatever you want you can add uh, extra sprites you can add extra labels uh, have a different layout and stuff like that it's all up to you um, so if we then go to the main event sheet we, you see that we have a group with the interaction, scroll interaction, scroll dialog interaction, a group with the scroll dialog, and then just a button here. Um, this show button on clicked, you will see that if you go to the main line, this is a show button. And each show button has an instance variable called list1, and this one is list2. So just do the same buttons or the same object type but two times a different value for the instance variable called list. Um, 
what we do here, um, when the button is clicked and the scrollable list background dialog is not shown, so it's not visible, we will call the function show dialog list, show scroll list, excuse me. And the parameter to this button is the list, the value of the list instance variable. In this case, for example, list2 will be passed along to that function. Um, and we can see that here in this show scroll dialog. So this is the list being passed along. And what we do is we just show the layers here and the layers consisting of the scroll uh, of the scroll lists. And then we activate the interaction here. This interaction block we activate it because whenever the dialog is hidden, the buy button shouldn't work and stuff like that. Um, and then what we do is, given the parameter, we just request the correct file. Whenever it's list 1, we take this JSON file. Whenever it's list 2, we take this JSON file. And then we use the asynchronous functionality of C3 to wait for the request file to come in, and then we parse it into a JSON object called list options. Here it is, list options. And then we call a separate function called populate list. Before I explain that, you can also see that we have a hide scroll dialog uh, function. With the only thing it does is just make those uh, events, uh, sorry, these layers invisible, and we deactivate the group again. That's it. And that's also called, for example, on the start of layout. So upon executing the uh, game, we don't see the uh, scroll dialog. So popular list. Oh, let me expand that a bit. We start by deleting all of the labels, all of the buttons, button text, dividers. Um, and the first thing we do after we do that, first of all, why do we do that, of course? Um, suppose we have multiple buttons like we just, like I just showed you, I have multiple buttons here. I could add three, or four or five. Um, that means that whenever we click a button, it will populate the list, it will create labels, create buttons and stuff like that. But if next time we open a different list, these little labels and buttons need to be destroyed first of the old list. So that's what happens here. If there are none, of course, this will do nothing. But if there is, they will be destroyed. And what we do then is we set the height of the list scroll. So the height of the list scroll is being set to the maximum of two possible values. And the maximum of two possible values is either the array size of the list options time the list item height, or if that is larger than the space between the scroll hole top and the scroll hole bottom image points I just showed you, then it will this, take this one, either one, uh, otherwise it will take this one. That might take a little more explanation. So what you see here is the array size of the list options. What is that? If you go look into the JSON file, these are the list items. And this is actually an array. You can see it by the square brackets with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In total, 7 options. And if you want to know how many options there are in this array, you can use the uh, expression array size. And that's what happens here, the array size of list items. And we multiply that by list item height, which is a constant, which I define here and set to 70, because I know by experiment that that is about the good height of such, a, uh, such a, an entry in the list scroller. You can fiddle with that, of course, depending on the content of the, um, the item. So the rest is just the difference between the scroll hole bottom image point and the scroll hole top image point, which is essentially the space between this one and this one here. So that means that if the, uh, the number of options in the uh, list option array is smaller than uh, the total uh, list option size, uh, permitting that there will be enough options in between, then it's just setting the size to the uh, the difference between the bottom and the top, so it becomes so small that it doesn't scroll anymore. That's the main idea here. So now we loop through all of the items in the um, 
item list. We use that using um, a for each uh, in that path, list items. So then we create an object, we create the list label actually, and we do that on the layer scrollable list content, which is this one here, and we do that at an exposition of the exposition of the list scroller plus the border. And then the Y position is the top of a border um, and a counter times the list item height. So the counter is what we define here and we increase here after we handle one single list item and the borders here are also uh, constants I've defined here and fiddled around with a little bit. So this all only works because uh, if we go and double click not that, uh, this one, this one, we can see that the image point is here at the top left. So that means that I can just say let's scroll x plus left left border if the in uh, origin if the origin would be in the center i would have to subtract the width divided by two again so i've made myself my life a little bit easier and i've done that so i can just add the list left border then i set the text to the label uh the label which is this option here label and then there's sub label and then there's item you see is what that is for just a minute and then we pin that label to the list scroll then we also create the sub label just below it. We set, uh, we set um, the value, the text, also pin it. Then we create the border. Um, this is a bit more complicated because it needs to be right aligned. So what I do is the X plus the width of the scroll minus a right border, minus 30. Um, that, that way the button will be at the correct place. And also the Y coordinate is a bit different. Um, and then I do a little, little adjustment. As you remember, there is, a, there is a container for the for the button and the button text. The button text will automatically be created in the center of the button, but unfortunately not bang in the middle of the Y coordinate. So the thing I do is just subtract two from the Y coordinate of the button um, to uh, set it as a Y coordinate with the button text. So I pin both of them and then I set the item instance variable of the button to item um, and that's actually used in a minute um, then what I do is also add a divider and I set the divider to the width of course again with a number of scrolling on uh, the correct x and y coordinate again and then what I do is I set the width of that scroll and then pin it and add one to the cover but I only do that if the counter is different from the options array size minus one so the last one won't have uh, a list divider below it i don't think that's very neat so i avoid that by doing this uh, condition so that's how the list is actually populated and if you can go to the interaction this is where the magic happens let me start at the bottom here you uh saw that um, I um, set the uh, item instance variable of the button so whenever we click the button and the button is the bounding box bottom is above the bottom of the of the image border and the top is below the, uh, the top of the scroll hall bottom that means that the button is somewhere in between this area here and whenever that is so when it is clicked i will set the info text set text to item pot so that's what happens why do we do these conditions otherwise the buttons would go above and be and below above and below this um, uh, border and if i were to click here somewhere for example and there would be a button here but hidden it would also be clicked and that's not the idea of course um, so that's why these conditions are there. The close button will close the dialog, of course. And here's the scroll wheel logic for up and down. And the only thing we do is just we set the Y coordinate of the wrist scroll plus or minus 20. And everything attached, pinned to that list scroll will go along. And the rest is actually just to make sure that the, uh, the scroll has the right behavior and that things get hidden 
whenever they go beyond and below the um, the, the dividers. So make sure the scroll doesn't go beyond the top or the bottom of the inside of the border. So we use the image points divide there to uh, to use that. If we see that the bottom of the scroller goes above the top, we just set the y coordinate of the list scroller to that top. So it can never go above the top. And here the same thing, if the bounding box bottom goes uh, beyond the bottom, then we just set the y to the bottom minus the list scroller height. Um, because the y coordinate is of course the top left as you saw, so I have to uh, subtract the list scroller height in order to make it snap to the bottom. So that's what happens here. And all the rest is just the same um, uh, logic for every kind of thing uh, that can be <coughs> attached to the list uh, scroller actually. So what we see here, for example, for the list item, if it's uh, beyond the top or beyond the bottom, we set the passage to zero else it's within the limits of the uh, uh, top limiters then we set the opacity to 100 and this is done for every single thing that can be attached to the list scroller so if you make your own um, your own list uh, divider um, if you make your own scrollable uh, window rather then um, you will have other things to uh, adjust here the opacity of so it's all up to you when you create your own scrollable list with custom content, of course. So that's it. Um, I hope you learned a lot. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. And I will leave uh, a link in the description where you can get the templates for this scrollable list. See you next time.